If your AI keeps failing over and over, you're likely making one of these three context engineering mistakes. And here's the thing, even with advanced models like Cloud Opus and O3, when we make these mistakes, the performance degrades drastically for these models as well, almost all the way up to 30% when the context is bad. I've tested a lot of fixes for these, and honestly, the performance is night and day. So let's get started. Alrighty, so before we talk about the three mistakes, which there are three mistakes, and each one of these has an associated fix, we're going to talk about context engineering really quick to recap, ensuring everybody knows what we're talking about in this video before we get into anything else. So first things first, it is super hot. Everybody's talking about it. It's, uh, it's the new trendy thing that everyone wants to discuss. And I won't do too much uh, context, pun intended, on this topic. But if you want to more in detail on this with me talking about it, there's 24 minutes of me talking about it. There are also tons of other videos on YouTube. You can check out whatever you want. It'll give you a good understanding of what this topic is and how it fits in the overall ecosystem. All right, so prompting without context engineering is simply a user giving their prompt to an AI and getting a response. There's no additional context. But if we're doing contexting or context engineering, we're taking all these different data elements and we're inserting them, not just all at once, but we're inserting what's needed at that moment and the associated data for it. So we're giving the thing that's needed, when it's needed, and only as much as needed. So here we have system prompts that we can include, which we've discussed. We have environmental state that's happening around the AI, the tools associated and that are available for the AI to call, compressed history of conversations that have happened in the past, maybe external memory associated to this individual that we can pull in at relative times, um, agent-to-agent -agent communication, user prompts, et cetera. And this is just some of the information that we can share within our context window to ensure we're getting the most out of the AI. And it's important to note that any AI application they're using today that is worth its weight in anything that's actually useful for you is has an AI engineer in the background doing very high quality context engineering, moving context in and out when it's needed and where it's needed. So that's our brief recap as to what context engineering is. But I do want to give some credit where credit is due. Actually, a lot of credit where credit is due. Um, Drew has written a lot about context engineering in his blog. And many of the fixes and associated issues that we're going to discuss here are based off of his two blogs here. So we have one blog, which is how long contexts fail. And we have another one here on how to fix your long contexts. So I'd recommend reading both of these if you want more detail on um, the specific points we're going to talk through this video and also associated sources for that. So the first mistake here is context clashing. So what is context clashing? Well, this is something that many of you have likely experienced as AI users. So if you're using Claude or ChatGPT, you may have had a run-on conversation with the AI where you've inserted information and you've added some new information that may contradict previous information you added. So this contradicting information between what you've inserted into the run-on conversation and what was in the past is going to conflict in its abilities to give you a high quality response because of the contradicting points. And this has actually been proven out through research. So here's a simple example that was done in research that showed a degradation in some of the highest quality models. So here's a high quality model that had a degradation in its ability to respond effectively from 98% to 64%. So on the right-hand side, we have the bad approach, which is a sharded conversation. So basically a bunch of information that's incrementally being shared. So in this example, we have a user which is providing some context. So they say, how long before, uh, before Jay is ready for a snowball fight? In between shared one and two, this is where the AI is going to respond. So the AI responds between these two. Then we give it more context. He's preparing for a snowball fight with his sister. Then the AI responds again in between the two shared points. Then we give it some more context. He, know, he can make 20 snowballs per hour, et cetera, et cetera. So we're giving an answer, AI responds. Giving the answer, AI responds. Giving the answer, AI. So a lot of back and forth. And this is useful for certain contexts when we're doing interviews. But if we're having the AI trying to achieve a task for us, the best approach here is actually to front load as much context as possible without having a lot of back and forth. So in this case, you just want to shove in all the context in the beginning and then get the answer back from the AI. That's the best approach here. Another example of how this falls short is if you're vibe coding. So this is an example I wanted to share with you that I've experienced myself and I'm sure many of you have, where each one of these bubbles is a run on conversation. So this entire thing is run on conversation. And we're having a lot of back and forth with our AI as we're vibe coding. And say in bubble one, we give it some context of an error that we've ran into and we want to try to fix it. So it tries to fix it, but it gives us an error and it has a failed attempt. So we give it more context of the failed attempt and it keeps iterating over and over. The further we allow this conversation to run on, the more likely we're going to degrade its ability to solve that specific bug. So if we keep going, the, the responses are likely going to increasingly get worse. So this is just another way of how this specific mistake manifests. The, the moral of the story of this specific mistake and also many of the other mistakes we'll talk about is garbage in, garbage out. That still holds true with AI and that still holds true specifically with bloated context windows. Now, what's the fix? 
So the fix here is, like I mentioned, to front load information so you can avoid the context clashing or contradicting points. And to front load this, there's many ways you can do this. So the simplest, the simplest way in between these two is simply using dictation. So dictate, brain dump, and shove that into AI and give as much context as to what you're trying to achieve, any historical information that's relevant, your intent, et cetera. And the AI will likely be more successful with that approach. If you're doing something more sophisticated, you can try this approach, which I've done in the past, where you use dictation for the brain dump, but you take that brain dump and you run that through another AI before you give it to the final one to summarize. So this AI is going to summarize the dictation you provided and more importantly, it's going to look for contradictions. So it's going to check for anything that's in this prompt that you've given me that's contradicting. And if so, I'm going to label it so I can then remove it and or edit that, that contradiction. After we have this new synthesized and summarized piece, we can then feed this to our final AI, which is then going to go off and do the more complex task for us, which is solving a bug, doing deep research, whatever else, data analysis, etc. And for this fix, as a reminder, if you're building custom GPTs, cloud projects, GPT projects, et cetera, or if you're building an actual AI application with an AI agent, for your system prompt, always be thorough and checking for conflicting points inside of the system prompt. Because as the models get more sophisticated, they're getting better at following instructions. GPT 4.1, Cloud Sonnet 4, uh, Opus 4, et cetera, they're all really good at following instructions. So anything, any small thing you include in your system prompt that's contradicting for anything else, it's going to follow that and or likely degrade its ability to respond. Quick pause in your programming. If you're enjoying these practical tips, below is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You click the link and you'll get 30 AI insights for 30 days on how you can apply AI practically to your business and your day-to-day -day work. If that's all interesting, check it out. With that being said, let's dive back in. So context clashing in this fix is our first point. Our next one is context confusion. So context confusion, somewhat similar to context clashing, but in a different realm, which is tools. Now this chart here is uh, kind of like a it's, a, it's an aesthetically pleasing chart I've created, but it follows many of the research studies I came across. And it comes down to tool calls. And when you give more tools to an AI, its ability to call the right tool degrades. So this chart here, probably not the greatest on the axes, but here we have a vertical axis, which is the incorrect tool call. So the percentage of incorrect tool calls, so higher is bad and is worse. And then more tools on the bottom. So the horizontal one is more tools available. So as we increase the number of tools here, the ability for the AI to call the correct tool degrades. So we're increasing incorrect calls here. And it's important to note that it's not just the number of tools and the bloating, but also the similarity between the tools. And those are two things I want to call out here, where the first thing is similar tools. So if you give a, an AI more than 20 tools, it's likely going to degrade in its ability to call the correct one at the right moment. And this is, the, this is kind of the Goldilocks number that many of the state-of-the-art models run into today. And this image here is just a depiction of what that looks like. So imagine if you're an AI looking at all these tools, these shapes, you may think that this specific image, this image here and this image here look very similar because they do. So you might accidentally choose the wrong tool for the wrong scenario because they're so similar. So the key here is to ensure that if you're giving um, tools to an AI, you limit the number of tools you provide, but also you ensure that the tool naming is very specific to that specific um, action that tool is going to take. But in addition to tools being similarly named, we also want to ensure that we're not bloating the context. So this is something we'll talk about in the future when it comes to the bloating of, uh, of context windows. But note that if you give it too many tools, it's likely going to call the wrong ones because its uh, context has been bloated and it's ca caused somewhat of a context rot, kind of like brain rot, where the AI is uh, degrading in its ability to call the right tools and accurately respond to you. So here we have two fixes, uh, one that's shared between this mistake and the next, and also one that's unique to this one. So the one that's unique is called tool loadout. So Drew, the guy that we gave credit to earlier, I'm assuming is a fan of video games because the term that he came up with is very related to that. But really quick, what's the definition? It's basically calling the right tools at the right time and pulling those into the context window. Instead of giving all of the tools to the AI, we're only providing what's needed for that scenario. And within video games, there's this concept of loadout, where before you start playing the game, you have the option to choose the different types of weapons, defense mechanisms, uh, skins, all the other things. As you can tell, the way that I talk through this, I'm not much of a gamer. But um, this is kind of the concept, where you basically get to prepare your character before you actually start playing the game. And down here is a kind of a depiction, a diagram I created that shows you how this manifests in tool loadouts. So on the left-hand side is a traditional approach where we're using MCP and we're giving access to all of the tools. So we have our user query that comes in and we then give our AI access to every single tool that's available for this specific, um, this agent. And you can see that there are probably a hundred plus tools here. The issue is that it's likely going to call the incorrect tool because it's overwhelmed both with too many tools and also too many tools that are named similarly. And when this happens, we have a bloated context window as well as a low accuracy rate. The fix here 
is one, this is one of many implementations of how we can do tool loadout, one of which is RAG MCP. So there's a paper written on this showing a, an, a drastic improvement in the AI's ability to call the right tool if you, you leverage this approach, where we have the user's query that comes in, similar to the other one. But then in between this, we have a smart retriever. So this is going to be another LLM that's going to retrieve a tool from a database. So over here, we have a database, and this has all of our tools inside of it, outside of the context window. So we're going to use semantic search, and then we're going to have the smart retriever retrieve the right tools based off of the semantic meaning match between the user's query and the tools inside of the database. Once we've done this, we're going to pull in maybe 5 to 10 to 15 tools, and then the AI is going to have a higher likelihood of choosing the right tool for the right job because it's not overloaded with too many. And by doing this, we have a smaller context window, so there's less bloat, and also the accuracy increases, increases drastically. This is our first fix for a context confusion. Our next fix is the one that I mentioned that's shared between this mistake and the next. So this, this fix is context offloading. So this is something that many of you have experienced in the past with other features, which we'll talk through in a second. But this is basically taking context and putting it external outside of the context window that's mainly available to our agents working on our behalf to ensure that we're not bloating it up. And we're pulling in the external context when necessary. So this saves space and also ensures that we're sharing the right information at the right time, making it relevant. So below, I have three examples of things that you've likely experienced with these models today. So if you're using ChatGPT, you've likely been gifted with the opportunity of realizing that ChatGPT has insights into you. So it has, it understands your name and maybe understands something about your personal life. Um, anything that you've shared with this AI that it thinks would be useful for future scenarios, it saves in an external memory bank. And that happens when you obviously switch on the ability to do so. If you switch this on, then you're likely going to benefit from that. So this is a form of context offloading. We're offloading long-term context that's relevant for future scenarios. And then the AI is continually polling and retrieving information from this data set to pull it in for your scenario and making the context more relevant for you. So that's ChatGPT memory. Our second example here is Claude's Scratchpad through its Think tool. So it has the ability to go through a process of scratch pad, so kind of thinking externally with a tool called Think. So the naming of this is pretty bad. They probably should have just named the tool scratch pad, but they named it Think for some reason. And down here, this is kind of a depiction of what this looks like. So on the left-hand side, we have the main context window. This is where the AI is doing a lot of its thinking. But if there's some additional thinking that needs to be had, we can ask the AI to use its Think tool, which means that it will go external to its context window and think outside of it with a separate agent. This agent's going to do a lot of extended thinking. Once it's finished, it'll synthesize all these thoughts, distill it down into what only matters for this main context window, and share that back. So instead of bloating the entirety of the context, it's only going to insert a small amount that's relevant for that scenario after it's done extensive thinking on the outside tool, which is the think tool. That's another form of offloading. And then finally, our to-dos. So if you're a vibe coder, I'm sure using any of these tools, Claude Code, Cursor, Windsurf, etc., you've likely adopted a process or have been given a process from these tools where you have a planning document or some sort of to-dos document. So in this document, this is a macro document that gives us a plan as to the overall application we're trying to build. And what the AI will do is it will reference this document on a recurring basis after it's finished building a feature. So imagine each one of these checkboxes right here is associated to a feature. So the AI will look at this feature request and it'll then check this off once it's completed and tested. After it's done this, it'll move to the next one. After it's completed it, it'll check it off and move to the next one. And every single time it moves to the new checkbox, it should be ideally creating a fresh conversation. So it has a fresh context window that's not bloated, that's not degrading its ability to respond effectively. And it's then filling it with both the next task and also historically what's been achieved in a small distilled way. So we're not bloating the context window. So this is a great way to ground your AI in its building process. So you're having a fresh context window and it's still achieving and going in the right direction as to what you've set out in the beginning with that macro plan. So that context offloading is our second fix to context confusion. So our final mistake here is context distraction. So this one's interesting because oftentimes when we talk about context windows, we get excited about long context windows, such as the million context window from Gemini 2.5 Pro. But we found through research that once you exceed 100,000 tokens for Gemini 2.5 Pro, it starts to go a bit insane. And what happens is it starts to, it, it, it starts to fixate on previous uh, actions. So it'll repeat itself doing things that it has done in the past, assuming that's going to fix the, front, the issue it's being confronted with, instead of coming up with a novel solution or something that's unique to that challenge to then overcome it more effectively. 
And I'm sure you've seen many of these new models are playing these games like Pokemon Go to see how far it can get in the game. And 2.5 Pro from Gemini, like I said, once it got to 100,000 tokens, it started to get fixated on a very specific uh, previous action and kept on repeating that past action over and over instead of creating up with novel novel strategies. So I'm not sure if you remember the, the saying, but there's a saying that's some quote somewhere where it's like uh, the definition of insanity is somebody that keeps repeating the same task, hoping for a different outcome. And that's exactly what we've done to Gemini 2.5 Pro. Once we've exceeded that 100K context window is we've made them insane, sadly. So this is a very good insight for a lot of people that are using these tools to note that if you exceed the 100K context window, just be aware that this may be an outcome for these models today. So the question is, how do we fix this? Well, the simple fix is summarization. We've already touched on this a bit, but it's important to summarize previous context and keep that context window as low as possible with, within, this, within the boundaries of still trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. A simple diagram of what this looks like is we have a large, large source passage, some sort of lo like long context. Instead of sharing all of this with our AI, we're going to run it through a process. So we'll run it through one LLM that's going to synthesize and summarize this, only pulling out what's relevant for the context of the scenario we're trying to achieve. Once it gives us a summary, then we'll ship that off to our AI, but only then. And again, this is a common thing that we, uh, we experience in vibe coding. So if you're using any of these tools, one of the best practices that you can apply is always starting fresh conversations, either when you're trying to uh, kind of solve a gnarly bug that keeps reoccurring or you're building a new feature, which means like when you have a conversation here, once you've finished or once you've realized that the AI is not going to fix the bug, you should summarize this and then feed it into a new conversation and then start again instead of running this conversation ongoing, because this is likely not going to get you to the point where you want to be. You're degrading the, abilities, the AI's ability to intelligently respond. And like I said, this is just one of the fixes. The other fix here is offloading again. So this is just another way of sharing this fix between the two mistakes. All right, and those are three mistakes. So we have context distraction, context confusion, and context clashing. So if you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends. And also below, like I said, is a 30-day AI insight series. So click that completely free. You'll get 30 days of 30 AI insights of how you can apply AI internally at your business and also in your day-to-day -day work. So if you want that, check it out. With that being said, internet, I'll see you next time.